faces. They fill me with dread and anxiety. Getting bumpy out there, team. Might want to buckle in. What the hell? Scratch that. Strap your shoots on. I ain't stopping on the island, but this storm might have other plans. Off to a promising start, eh? The Coalition don't get enough credit for how well they've managed the Gears of War franchise since they took over as its caretakers. Gears of War 4 was a solid introduction to a new era for the series. Gears 5 followed it up with what is probably one of the best single player campaigns in a Gears game. Gears Tactics branched out and successfully tried its hand at crafting a great turn-based tactics experience. And now, Gears 5 Hive Busters continues in that same vein. A single player expansion isn't something that Gears fans would necessarily be very used to, especially for a game that came out over a year ago. But Hive Busters feels surprisingly essential, even with the absence of all the main characters, who've become the center of the franchise's larger story. Though quite short at roughly three hours long, Hive Busters packs a punch, and thanks to excellent pacing, varied environments, tense action, and other strengths, leaves a lasting impression. As its name suggests, in Gears 5 Hive Busters, you play as Scorpio Squad, a trio composed of Keegan, Mac, and Lonnie, who were introduced as the locust hive busting stars of the co op multiplayer mode Escape in Gears 5 last year. The likes of Kate Diaz and Marcus Phoenix are nowhere to be seen, but Scorpio Squad and the cast of supporting characters around them proves to be more than up to the task of stepping into their shoes. Solid voice acting, well-written conflicts between characters, well-timed moments of levity, and even better-timed moments of quietude ensure that Scorpio Squad firmly establishes itself as some of the better characters in Gears history, in spite of only occupying the screen for around three hours. The one character who perhaps doesn't shine as brightly is Keegan, who is also the default playable character if you're playing solo. Thanks to Mac's hot-headed persona and inner demons and Lonnie's backstory and her ties to the more mystical aspects of the story, the two of them certainly come across as unique and memorable characters. But Keegan is a bit too generic in his I must always follow orders and play things by the book attitude. Additionally, while I enjoy the interactions and bonds between these characters, I feel they got to the phase where they're willing to die for each other a bit too quickly, especially in light of the heated arguments they got onto earlier on. Their eventual friendship ended up feeling a bit unearned as a result. Where Gears 5 Hive Buster's biggest strengths lie, however, is in the thrilling firefights and its high octane action, which really isn't surprising for a Gears game. Even though it's relatively short, it doesn't feel short at all. The campaign is absolutely packed and constantly keeps taking you from one beautiful location to the next, constantly keeps throwing new elements in, constantly keeps dropping you right in the midst of desperate and enthralling firefights. From crash landing on a mysterious island to breaking into a locust hive to floating on top of a steel platform through a river and so, so much more, Gears 5 Hive Busters keeps switching things up, with each scenario lasting just the perfect amount of time before moving on to the next exciting thing. Of course, the Coalition have a knack for putting together excellent designed and tightly crafted linear shootout arenas and set pieces, as they've firmly established with both Gears of War 4 and Gears 5, so it's not surprising that they continue to exhibit those strengths here as well. What is surprising is that the shootouts and set pieces that they've sewn together here are perhaps some of the best I've seen in a Gears game. The busiest and most chaotic moments of Hive Busters make full use of the game's excellent enemy variety, and navigating its tightly designed linear environments while ensuring that you're able to cope with the overwhelming forces the game keeps throwing at you is always exciting. I was constantly on the edge of my seat. Gears 5 Hive Busters also makes some changes to the light RPG mechanics that the Coalition implemented in the base Gears 5. Jack the Bot is obviously not part of Scorpio Squad. Replacing him and his upgradable passive and active abilities are unique ultimates, one each for the members of Scorpio Squad. 
Tegan can replenish ammo, Lonnie has an electrified knife that can pulverize foes, and Mac can deploy a shield that stays in front of him while he moves around. Each of these moves is incredibly useful, and I found myself relying on them often. In fact, clearly the reason Hivebusters is full of those desperate and hectic firefights mentioned before is to encourage players to make use of those ultimate abilities. These abilities also come with surprisingly short cooldowns, which means using them often is the way to go. And given how effective and fun they can be to use, you won't really need much nudging to let them loose anyway. These ultimate abilities can also be upgraded, which is done by picking up mysterious stone tablets in the game's environments. I'm not sure how I feel about these upgrades. On the one hand, they can provide extremely useful buffs, such as making Mac's shield deal damage to any enemy that touches it, or giving Lonnie's electrified knife chain lightning, which is wonderfully overpowered. On the other hand, tying each upgrade to essentially finding a single collectible feels too simplified. I'm all for tying progression mechanics into exploration, but in a game that is as linear and focused as Hivebusters is, it just feels incongruous. Something else that I need to mention is how beautiful Hivebusters looks. When I played Gears 5 on an Xbox One X last year, it was the best looking game to have been released for the console at the time. Fittingly enough, Hivebusters is the best looking game on the Xbox Series X. Running in 4K, each of its lush, gorgeous, and varied environments pop with instant and gobsmacking beauty, while thanks to its rock-solid and unwavering 60fps performance, the animations, movement, and combat feel incredibly smooth. As you'd expect from the Coalition, this is yet another technical showcase. Gears 5 Hivebusters is an unexpected surprise. It follows a year after the base game, and though the Coalition have of course been constantly updating Gears 5's multiplayer, a single player expansion wasn't really something anyone expected. Having played Hivebusters, I hope it won't be the last of its kind. Packed full of excellent action, blistering combat, a solid cast of characters, and astoundingly beautiful visuals, Gears 5 Hivebusters is unmissable for anyone who considers themselves a fan of the series. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.